Hey guys, this is Amit, and today I'm going to be doing the second part of our series, Building Sim Using Open Source Tools. So on the last video, we did the installation of Syslog NG, which is the major component of our Sim platform. And today we're going to be doing the installation of Elasticsearch, uh, which actually stores the data. And we will install Kibana, which is used to visualize and analyze the uh, data stored in Elasticsearch. So let's get started. In order to do the installation, let's just go ahead and do a quick Google search, um, Elasticsearch. CentOS 7, and let's look at the Elasticsearch website. There's a pretty detailed guide on installing Elasticsearch. As you can see here, you can install from the RPM repository by configuring the Elasticsearch repo, like it shows here, or you can just download the Elasticsearch package and install the RPM that way. Today, we're going to be using the repository. So let's just copy this and I'll create scm.repose.d and elasticsearch.repo. So you just paste that into this file. And similarly, we do the same thing for Kibana. Let's go ahead and get that done. Kibana installation CentOS 7. Just go in here. Same thing with Kibana. You just copy this and put it into the kibana.repo, bihcm.repos.d, kibana.repo, and then just paste it here. Once we have that, let's go ahead and install yum install Elasticsearch and Kibana. Let's do the installation of both since we're going to be installing both Kibana and Elasticsearch. As you can see, there's the version 6.5.4-1 for both the Elasticsearch and Kibana. There's the compatibility metrics you may be able to search online. Um, the Elasticsearch and Kibana versions have to match in order to work together. Let me see if I can find that while the installation is going on. Elasticsearch Kibana metrics. Product compatibility. We're doing the 6.5x works with 6.5x, so you have to be on the same version. So the installation of the both Kibana and Elasticsearch is complete. And as you can see, it says you can start Elasticsearch by executing systemctl start and same thing for the Kibana. Now the installation is complete. So I'm going to show you two main important files here. Elasticsearch.yaml and Etsy Kibana, Kibana.yaml. These are the two main configuration files. This is the main configuration file for Elasticsearch, and this is the main config file for the Kibana. So let's take a look at the um, Elasticsearch first. There are different options here. Uh, we're not doing the cluster on this video today. That could be a topic for another video. Um, there's the path for the log. By default, it's the var log Elasticsearch. Log memory, uh, bootstrap.memory underscore log. We're going to set this to true. We can put that config at the bottom, or we can just uncomment this here. Network.host, by default, it listens on localhost port 9200 and 9300. So we'll leave it that as default unless you wanted it to listen on the actual interface. In this case, we're going to be visualizing the Elasticsearch using Kibana. So Elasticsearch itself does not have to listen on the actual network interface. So it can just be on the local host. That's actually it for the Elasticsearch for our purpose. Here, let's go ahead and um, you know enable the Elasticsearch to start up at boot by using the command systemctl enable Elasticsearch. 
And then let's go ahead and start Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch. We can watch the netstat command to see when the port comes up. It can take a couple of seconds for the port to show up here. As you can see here, uh, the port 9300 is up here. And you can also see that the port 9200 is right here and the 9300 is here. So the Elasticsearch has started. Now let's go ahead and to this look at the Kibana YAML file. Kibana.yaml. So the default port for Kibana is 5601. We'll leave at default server.host, localhost. It's going to listen on the localhost. We can actually let the Kibana run on the localhost and we can do a reverse proxy to access that over uh, port 80 or 443 uh, without exposing Kibana to the actual network interface. But for this video, we're just going to have it listen on the actual interface, 192.168.100.192. And the Elasticsearch URL, this is going to be the actual URL of the Elasticsearch here. Since the Elasticsearch is only listening on the localhost, so we're just going to leave it at that. If you have Elasticsearch running on another instance or a different IP address, then you can update the value there. We can leave the Kibana index to .kibana. Um, let's see what other options. We're not doing the SSL today. Just going through the config file real quick. You can actually set the logging.dest. You can set it to logging.dest var log kibana.log. That's basically it for getting the Kibana up and running. Let's go ahead and enable uh, Kibana to start at boot. Oops, I missed the S here. And also, let's go ahead and start Kibana. Same thing, let's just watch. That's that minus two pun, grip minus I list. And let's look for the port 5601 to come up here. It can take a couple seconds, just like the Elasticsearch. As you can see, the 5601 is up and running here. So now the Kibana is running as well. Let's take a look at the IP address and let's fire up a browser and we'll go to the port 5601 here. Site cannot be reached, connect, refuse to connect. Let's make sure the port is still listening. Okay, looks like the port is not listening. Something's happened over here. Let's take a look. We can actually run the journal ctl minus u kibana.service command to see what's going on. Okay. We can see that the permission was denied opening up the varlog kibana.log. We specified that the uh, kibana should be logging at this file varlog kibana.log. But one thing is the kibana runs as user kibana. So it may not have permission to write into that directory. Uh, let's take a look, varlog. As you can see here, uh, the Permissions on this directory is write only by root users. So let's go ahead and touch var log kibana dot log and ch own kibana to the var log kibana dot log. And let's go ahead and restart kibana. Let's go ahead and watch the port show up here. Okay, I can see the port here. Let's go ahead and go 
go back to our browser, freeze the page. Kibana server is not ready yet. It can take a couple extra seconds. Sometimes if you don't have the Elasticsearch IP address and port configured properly on the kibana.yml, you could run into this problem as well. This is the Kibana interface. Now we can go to the Discover and we can actually see that we have the Kibana sample data logs. It must be there from my last installation. Otherwise, you could, um, let me just go ahead and delete this. Just delete the index. Go to the home page. So as you can see here, there is an option to add the sample data. So you can just click there and add, you know, one of the sample data. So here's sample e-commerce orders, sample flight data, sample web logs. Let's go ahead and install the sample web log here. So the sample web logs is installed. Now if you go to the management and look at the index, we had deleted this index. So the index Kibana sample data logs is here. Now we can go to the discover. And let's look at all data, why not? So if you look at here, so we have all the log data and then you can see the chart here uh, showing the data as well. Now you can, just expand this. You can have the table format or the JSON format for the data. So you can see all the metadata here. So you can search by any metadata that is parsed. For example, client IP. So you can either click on this and filter by that IP address, or let me just copy that IP address, delete this filter. And I can actually do client let me enable the query features. So this way it'll kind of like autocomplete or help you type the meta keys, client IP, and then colon this. So now you filter that by that particular IP address. So you can filter by all these um, indexed metadata that you have. That's the discover tab. If you go to the visualize tab, there are some sample created, visualizations created. You can see here, you can create different types of visualizations and you can add up those visualizations to create dashboards. So if you look at the logs, web traffic, you can see different, different uh, visualizations are added up to create a dashboard. So you can do cool things like this. The other thing I would want to show you is the dev tools. This is where you can make REST calls to the Elasticsearch for management, search, delete, or you know other stuff. And then the other interesting tab is the management where you can actually do the index management. You can delete at the index, manage index, so index settings, edit index settings, manage plus, and so forth. If you go to the manage again, there's index patterns for the Kibana. This is sometimes if you add new indexes, you might have to refresh the field list. That way it resets the indexes and shows up the newly created indexes. Uh, let's see what the index, uh, and there are additional advanced settings for the, for the Kibana application. That's how you install Kibana and Elasticsearch onto the stack. So far we have installed SyslogNG, we have installed the Elasticsearch to store the logs forwarded from SyslogNG. We still have to do the configuration for the SyslogNG to forward data to Elasticsearch. And then we have the Kibana installed, which you can use to visualize and manage Elasticsearch. I hope this video was helpful 
And in the next video, we're going to be doing the actual configuration on the syslog ng so we can forward the logs that we receive from various sources into the Elasticsearch and we will look at those logs using the Kibana interface. So stay tuned for my next video. And if you like this video, as always, do like, subscribe and share the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.